Hey everybody, welcome back to a video mess. So Terraker continuing the series on the Steam Deck, more importantly, what emulators you should be playing, how to set them up, and the best games to play on them when you get it running. And today we're doing one of my personal favorites, it's the Sharp X68000, or the God Tier Computer of the 80s and 90s, getting so many arcade perfect ports as well as exclusives to that platform. Now I will say this is a bit tricky to set up and you need to follow the directions closely or else it will not work, so please don't skip ahead on this video. If you watch from start to finish, you too will be playing Akumajo Dracula, the Sharp X68000 exclusive version of Castlevania by the time you are done. Before you get too far involved though, do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like and subscribe and ring that notification bell, definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, we got a Patreon link down below as well. And before you get your comments ready, yes I know, this game's also on PlayStation 1, but it does ever so slightly vary. Now if we move over to my Windows desktop, you're going to see we have all the files we need to make this run, and I'm going to sort them by type. You're going to see the three DAT files, CGROM, IPHROM, as well as SRAM.DAT. We're going to need these three files to make this work. But how we use them is where the instructions, if you read it online, versus what actually works on Steam Deck differ. And I have no idea why there's an MP3 in there. We'll just move that out of the way. You will see that I'm using that .hdf files. This is what I recommend to use, or else you're going to have to deal with D88 floppy drive files, which are incredibly slow loading. You can find .hdf files for pretty much every popular game for the Sharp X68000. They are self-booting with an operating system on them. This is highly what I recommend. So I'm going to copy these over to a USB stick, and you'll see I've already done this. I did this before I started the tutorial because it is complicated and I needed to learn the proper methodology to get it done myself. So I'm just going to overwrite the files I have right here. So now you'll see on this removable USB drive, I have the three BIOS files we need. Technically one is actually a font file, but it is crucial. It won't work without it. And what we're going to do is make a folder here, and we're going to call it Keropi, K-E-R-O-P-I. We need this folder once we get into Steam Deck, or else you cannot get the Sharp X68000 to boot. I will explain why in just a moment. But we'll move those three BIOS files, for lack of a better term, into the Keropi file. And now we have everything we need. But the reason we have that Keropi folder is that if we take a look at MUDEC here, you have this MUDEC wiki, and it's going to go over different BIOS and ROMs that you need for your individual emulators. And this is going to tell you that you need to put the BIOS files in the BIOS folder of your MUDEC installation. Just DEC, emulation, and then BIOS. If you put the files in there, at least on my Steam Deck, it is not going to work whatsoever, but I will get into how it does work in just a moment. If you scroll down, this is a great resource. It's going to give you a cheat sheet for all of the different BIOS files you need per emulator as well as the actual game files they accept. You have to go pretty deep to get Sharp X68000, but I'm hoping a lot of you are inspired to play this because of the video. And tell me down below if you've ever played X68000 or if you are one of the rare owners of it. But if we take a look at the Sharp X68000 here, you're going to see all the different file types you can use. And like I said, you will have some success with different files, but HDF is the one I recommend. But if we click the Lib Retro Wiki link, you're going to see down below, it's going to tell you the BIOS files that are required and that they go into the front end system directory. It's going to say the firmware files need to be in a directory named Keropi in RetroArch's system directory. If you don't get that Keropi folder going, it is just not going to do anything whatsoever. So that's why we move these three files into the folder. This is going to be such a benefit when you actually get into your Steam Deck. And don't forget all my tutorials are based on using a USB thumb drive or a micro SD to USB converter and a dock because so many of these Sharp X68000 games look great on a television. I will leave a link in the description below to the dock I use. It does absolutely everything I need to capture these videos, transfer the files. Everything just seems to work perfectly fine. This is not sponsored. I make no money off that link. Now when we get over to our SteamOS desktop mode, we will go ahead and mount and open that USB stick we have here. And now you're going to see all the different files that we added to that X68000 folder. Because I don't have a Keropi folder here, as I captured this earlier, I need to kind of hunt and peck to get the files that I need. Not a big deal whatsoever, but I was trying to save you some time. So I'll go ahead and copy two of the three BIOS files, and we'll move over to MUDEC installation, and under BIOS, you're going to want to make a folder called Keropi, or drag and drop a folder called Keropi. If you need to make a folder, just go ahead and right click, create new, and go ahead and say folder right there. And then if you do need to use a virtual keyboard because you're not actually using a keyboard via USB, just hold down the Steam button, hit X, and your virtual keyboard will pop up. Make the folder name Keropi, all lowercase. 
and then go ahead and drop your three BIOS files in this folder. When I tried to launch x68000 on my Steam Deck without this folder, I got absolutely no results whatsoever. You will see that I put the BIOS files in the main BIOS folder as well, just in case, but in my experience, it really didn't matter. And you'll see that config file right there. That does not appear until you launch the x68000 core from RetroArch the first time. The first time you do this, it's just going to fail. Quit RetroArch, try it a second time, and you will succeed. But we still need to get the games onto our directories as well, so we're not quite done yet. Just be aware your first boot is always going to be a fail, at least in my experience. And the reason that is is because if you're using RetroArch on desktop, you do need to sometimes manually configure things in this config file, but luckily MUDEC does this all for us. Now we'll go ahead and take these HDF files and go ahead and copy whatever you want over and we'll move back over to our EmuDeck installation. We'll go into emulation and then to ROMs. The good thing is this is all alphabetized so you can imagine where x68000 is going to be. It is going to be at the bottom of the list near the ZX Spectrum, Xbox, and Xbox 360. This is where you put all of your files that you want to use. And again, I can't recommend these HDF files enough. They're just going to be so much easier for you. And you will see here that I do have the BIOS files for the X68000 just in the BIOS folder in case it decides to look for them later. It's less than a megabyte for all of this, but definitely that Kuropi folder is what lit it up. When you've done all this, before we get into Steam ROM Manager, go ahead in desktop mode, go to all applications, and go down to RetroArch because we want to load RetroArch and the X68000 core a second time to make sure everything is correct and to get it past that first crash, which is always going to happen. Go ahead and load content. Again, X68000 alphabetically at the bottom and go ahead and select whatever game you want. You will see the screen is going to go black for just a moment. That is normal. I am cutting this down. It's like 10 seconds. And after those 10 seconds occur, you're going to see this version of a DOS prompt, Human 68K, and then it's going to load into the game. Don't think things did not work on the X68000 core. It can be between 10 to 30 seconds between black screen and actually seeing a game. So don't quit out too quickly. It's possible you think it doesn't work, but in reality you're just not giving it enough time because it does basically load at the same speed that real X68000 hardware would. Come on into Emudeck, load up Steam ROM Manager, read the warning about it changing your controllers quickly. People seem to get tripped up on this, and you want to make sure you scroll all the way down to the bottom again almost to make sure your X68000 parser is turned on. If the parser is off, it's never going to find any of the games. By default, it should be on, but just take a look. That way you know everything is correct, because we definitely want to get these games into more of the handheld operating system looking mode. That way we can play them easier on the go. You hit parse, and you'll see here that all the games come up. If we go to parser and scroll down to the bottom again, a theme in this video, we're going to see the Sharp X68000. If you added all the games correctly to the right folders, they will all show up here, but Akumajo Dracula actually pulls the wrong version of the artwork because it shares a very similar name. You can definitely change any of the artwork you want here. This is what's going to be showing up on your handheld mode when you're playing with your Steam Deck. When you're happy, just go ahead and hit Save to Steam, and all of those games are going to be there for you to play. But just because we have some things running, we still need to go through a lot of the settings for the core because there's different variations in the core menu that you are going to have to change depending on what game you are playing, and I'll explain those in just a moment. But when we get in, we have a near arcade perfect version of Final Fight that is 100% running exactly as I would expect it to if this was on real Sharp 68000 hardware. The sound is great, the look is clean, it is just an amazing experience, and EmuDeck configures all the controls over to what you would need if you were really playing with a controller or keyboard on a Sharp X68000. But if we hop into the RetroArch options here and we go up to Manage Core Options, we should be on the correct core for what we're doing, PX68K. That's that's what EmuDeck installs by default, and under system settings you can leave font size where it is, but be aware with the RAM size, we start at 2 megabytes and go up from there. You would think the easiest thing to do would be to max it out at 12, but some games are not compatible with more RAM, so you want to leave it at 2 and adjust upwards if you get a missing RAM message. As far as the CPU speed, we have 10, 16, and 25 megahertz. Those were variations of the hardware released. And then we have faster ones that are overclocked that didn't really technically exist as Sharp X68000 hardware. Leave it at 10 megahertz, game should run totally fine. You can adjust it up and down if you want, but 10 megahertz is basically what most games were designed to use, the ones you're going to want to play, so you'll be fine there. 
And as far as software MIDI is concerned, it just doesn't work for me whatsoever. I have never gotten MIDI out of this emulator with any setting whatsoever, so we're just not dealing with MIDI. If you know how it works, leave me a comment down below because I've never actually managed to make it happen. But we do have different MIDI emulators there and different devices it's trying to deal with. But those are the core settings that we basically have, and we have some tweaks as well. You can have a rumble when the floppy disk drive is reading to kind of emulate what it would be like to be near a Sharp X68000. And you also have a frame skip. But in my experience with the Steam Deck, you can just leave it as full frame. Nothing needs to be changed whatsoever. This will run at full speed in basically every single game. So when we get back into Final Fight here, it is running totally fine on the Sharp X68000 RetroArch Core for Steam Deck. But there's more things that go into running these games than just what I've shown you here. So do be aware that I still have a little bit more to show you to get you an easier time. Since we are still in desktop mode, we can just go to load content back to x68000 and we can pop into another game. Now something like Mad Stalker here freezes for almost a minute on a black screen. Be aware again, give these games time, sometimes they take a while to load up. Do not think that it is frozen or not working in the background. If one HDF is working and your files are good, generally it's just the amount of loading time. But if you've never played Mad Stalker, this is 100% a game you should totally check out on the core. And there are so many amazing Sharp X68000 games to play, and I'm assuming most of you have never played this hardware or software before. The Steam Deck, RetroArch, and Emu Deck do an amazing job getting the X68000 up and running. It is a complicated setup process, but once you get it going, you can just add those HDF files as you want to go along. If we take a look at the handheld mode here, if we just come down, we'll see Sharp X68000 because we added the ROMs from the Steam ROM Manager, and we can again boot games from here. But don't be surprised again if you have to wait 10, 15, 20 seconds upwards to a minute to actually see anything on screen. This core loads the content at the exact same bitrate that original Sharp X68000 hardware would load it at. And that means we're dealing with late 80s, early 90s computer technology, which did not load fast whatsoever. So many times people tell me something didn't work, and it's just down to loading speeds. If you see a screen like this, this is selecting MIDI or the internal FM sound chip. Just make sure you don't select MIDI or else you're not going to have any volume because of that software MIDI emulation. If you want MIDI on the Sharp X68000, I recommend Original Hardware or a Mr. FPGA where we can do that. But playing Akumaju Dracula here, it's just incredible. This is one of the best Castlevania games of all time, in my opinion. And it's also extremely expensive to buy a copy and to own an original Sharp X68000. But with Steam Deck, we have a way to play this game and all the other diverse library of games for the Sharp X68000. Just be aware, Konami developers are trolling you. This is a quasi-remake. There should have been wall meat here, but they know you know, and they released an entire torrent of flea men out to absolutely destroy your day. But the best part about it is, even if you die to the flea men, you're playing one of the best Castlevania games on your Steam Deck on the Sharp X68000 hardware. And that and that alone is worth the effort it takes to getting this to play. And of course, because I know a lot of people aren't familiar with the hardware, I'll have a best X68000 games to play on your Steam Deck video coming soon. But if you followed the tutorial from start to finish, didn't skip anything over, you two will be playing one of the best retro gaming computers of all time on your Steam Deck. If you have any problems or questions, leave me a comment down below. Just make sure you watch the entire thing because most of the problems I fix are just timestamps from the video because someone skipped ahead. Short of that, go play some X68000. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.